in the exhale, release out to the top of the head and relax the outer body over that inner line of strength. As you breathe up the front of the spine, feel for places where you could accentuate space, where you might have the tendency of collapsing. Don't make it stiff and rigid force, just a lengthening skyward. All the way up through the neck. This doesn't mean we lift the chin to lengthen the neck. Instead, we let the chin relax a little down and we lift the neck crease. We lift the spine right up inside the skull. This may bow the head a little, <clears throat> lower the gaze a little. Outer body relaxes on the exhale. Front of the spine becomes spacious and long. Now simultaneously feel up both sides of the spine, lengthen the sides of the spine skyward. Relaxing the shoulder girdle on the exhales away from the ears. Feel into the lengthening side neck. Feel the length from your sacrum up the sides of this lumbar spine, up the sides of the thoracic spine where the ribs come in. Relax the outer body over this inner strength. Let the spine stretch you taller. Evenly from each sit bone. And then lengthen up the back of the spine to the base of the skull. Fluid breath. Feel into creating space along the back of the spine. The back of the neck up to the base of the skull and even into the skull. Relaxing the outer body over this inner strength. Now lengthen up the whole circumference of the spine up into the skull. Rest the skull on top of that fingertip of the spine. And notice if it's harder to find length on one angle of the spine. For most of us, my assumption is it may be harder to lengthen the front of the spine because we're used to curling forward. So we breathe from the pelvic bowl up into the heart center. We buoy the heart center at the sternum. We breathe in along the side bodies up into the armpits. Find a gentle lift of the armpits, a lengthening of the outer side body. Imagine there are little ocean buoys under each armpit, and on your inhale, they lift the armpit, but the upper shoulder girdle, the upper traps can relax because the lift comes from below. On the exhales, really relax that upper shoulder girdle, even as those ocean buoys lift you at the armpit. Smooth breath, turn it into an ujjayi breath now. 
Inhaling the ah and exhaling the ha through your nostrils. Let the ocean wave of the inhale lift those little armpit buoys, both the front and back of the armpit. Thinking of placing the head of your arm bones in that middle place. Let the hyoid bone become its own little ocean buoy, lifting up and in as the chin rests down slightly. Broad across the shoulder girdle, find the shoulder blades hugging onto the back ribs and breathe width into the rib cage. This yoga of aligning the spine, of aligning the arm bones, serves every pose. And breathe into the full circumference of the torso. Invite the breath to massage the spine, to ripple through the waters in the organs and intestines. Now imagine a river of energy running from earth to sky. Let it run right through you, up through the pelvic floor, along the Shishumana channel in front of the spine, out the top of the head and into the stars. And breathe the energy, the prana up from the earth to flow through you into the sky. Keeping that upward energy, exhale and allow the outer body to relax over this inner river. Invite the outer body to ground you and root you to earth. As you relax the outer body a little heavier, you're practicing upon a vayu, the wind of letting go of grounding. As you inhale up the Shushamana channel, you're engaging the wind, prana vayu. We breathe up lifting ourselves on pranavayu, and then we ground ourselves on the exhale of pranavayu. There's a middle place where these upward and downward energies meet. It's called samanavayu. We invite this wind into our bodies and our awareness at the navel, and we integrate we digest what comes our way, not just food and water, but our thoughts, our interactions with others, the sights we see in the outer world. Through the wind, Samana Vayu, we digest and integrate them all. The emotions, the thoughts, the sensations. We take in our present experiences and we digest them. This wind is turned inward and invites our awareness to follow. In honor of solstice, let's keep this inward gaze today. Inhaling our hands to our hearts. 
May we become aware of what's happening inside to harmonize the energy so it can ripple back out from us to others as a healthy hum, a healthy vibration, as an offering of prana. Namaste. Okay, let's take these values and our awareness up to standing. I brought all kinds of things out by my mat today, my eye pillow, my sandbag. If you want to get yourself some little winter solstice gifts, <laughs> you could get yourself a sandbag or an eye pillow, a couple more blankets or a bolster if you don't have those things. Seems like we do have home studios now. It's fun to have them well stocked. Let's shake the arms out to the sides. Really let the fingers dangle, opening the doorways in the fingers and the knuckles of the palms. Up into the wrists and the elbows, up into the shoulder girdle. Invite the arms to release. The muscles of the shoulder girdle to not grip too tightly. And then let's step our feet out or hip distance wide and let the arms begin to gently circle around the spine and the spine to gently twist. And don't feel like you need to overdo this. Keep thinking of space between your vertebrae. But we also want fluid movement. We want, we want the discs between the vertebrae to be supple. If you'd like, let the front hand come up and tap the lung and the back hand come up and tap the kidney. We borrow this knocking on the door of life from Qigong inviting the lung and kidney meridians to open, the energy to flow. Inviting the spine to gently warm up. So you can turn the head and gently gaze towards the far corners of the eyes, like the eyes are also involved in the twist. Or you can keep your eyes closed and do that action with the eyes, if that makes you less dizzy. And then release the arms from their tapping and let them just dangle as you slow the twist and come towards stillness. And then let's inhale and reach the arm skyward, reach up through the thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger, Stretch the hands, root the feet, lengthen the torso, and then exhale, interlace the fingers, thumbs to the base of the skull, and wrap the elbows in a hug around the side head. Rest the head into the hands, root the tailbone, lift the low back rib ring, and stretch the elbows skyward. Really rooting the back heels, the tailbone, Lift the low back ribs and roll the spine over as if opening over a bolster. Breathe up the side waist and from the hips down into the outer edges of the feet. Lift your toes, lift your arches, lift the pelvic floor gently. And then you can stay here or maintaining the length of the neck, release the arms to lengthen beside the ears, reaching out of the thumb, index finger, middle finger, ring finger, pinky finger. Exhale, back to standing, hands to namaste. Heels under sit bones, bend your knees and come into your utkatasana. And inhale, very gently twist one direction and exhale, twist the other. Just a rocking motion 
real gentle at the beginning of practice. Inviting the body to warm up. And then let's come back to standing. Release the arms. And if you have a wall or a door, walk to that and reach your fingers as high as you can up the wall. And then lower your heels away. This is a very important practice. What we're really trying to do is find space at the waistline and through the thoracic spine. If your shoulders end up near your ears, try to keep the length in the torso and broaden the shoulders. The shoulders may draw the fingers down a little bit. Keeping that spaciousness in the spine, walk back towards your half dog. Remember, it does not need to be parallel with the floor. You want to keep length in the spine. Take one foot behind you and float it up, toes pointing towards the floor. Perhaps you come to fingertips on the wall. Perhaps you lift the fingertips off. Vira Bhadrasana 3, keeping the neck long. Trying to keep your pelvis level like you have a base of flowers on the sacrum. And lower this foot, walk into the wall. Put your hands right next to your shoulders and isometrically draw down as you lengthen up the wall for your cobra. Try not to throw your pelvis into the wall. Bring your shoulder blades onto the back body, low tips, helping you lift the front sternum up. Really nice length to your necks. Really nice length, broad across the shoulder girdle. These look beautiful. And then release the cobra, reach your hands back up the wall. Really reach high. Come on to the balls of your feet. And as you lower down, I'm watching this time, try to make sure you're lengthening the waistline. You're lengthening the thoracic spine. Nice job keeping your shoulders broad, Susie. Fluid breath, you too, Linda. Really breathe length and space up into that spine. Now activate your bandhas, lifting your pelvic floor, drawing energy up the front of the spine and step back towards half dog. Really nice length. Good job keeping your length, Anna. And float the next foot up behind you. Keeping your pelvis level. Beautiful, Linda and Susie. Really nice level pelvis. Fluid breath. <laughs> this is so interesting to look at how people are making use of their own houses, especially those of you who have two in the room. Beautiful. Fluid breath. If you want, you come to your fingertips. Some of you may even lift the hands off the wall and balance. Good. And then release. Step back into the wall. Hands at shoulder height. One more cobra up the wall. Some of you may be able to walk your toes up the wall. Get a little closer, snug in, and get a little toe stretch. As you draw your hands down, lengthen the low back. Lift the low back ribs. Find the shoulder blades on your back body. Let the lower tips help you round the upper collarbone skyward and lift the heart center. Let your heads rest back and imagine that strap tractioning the base of your skull. Beautiful, Terry. Fluid breath. And release. Turn your side body to the wall. And lift one arm long up the wall. That was really nice to watch. You all really have um, a good awareness of your necks. So keep your feet about six to eight inches from the wall. Those of you who are taller may want to be a little farther. You can play with that. And lean your inner hip against the wall as you reach the hand up, back of the hand against the wall, palm facing the center of the room. Outer hand, the hand towards the inside of the room, Presses into the leg, lift the pelvic floor, lengthen up both sides of the spine. So remember the ocean buoy under the armpit of the arm that's dangling down. Both side bodies lengthen. And then we bend slightly off the wall if that's comfortable in our bodies. And we breathe into the opening side, rooting the feet. 
Invite the energy up through earth and out through the top of the head. As you lengthen this inner channel, we're also stretching the outer body here. Fluid breath. But keep the side you're bending towards long and strong as well. And then exhale back up to standing. So those exercises we do in Pilates where we're twisting like this, we're waking up the obliques and you're using those obliques to put the brakes on your side bend here, okay? So go ahead and come on to your next side, arm up the wall, palm facing the center of the room, feet about eight inches out, hip on the wall, activate your bandhas, strengthen that side with the buoy, and slowly side bend a little away from the wall. Now, those of you with osteoporosis, you have to really think of keeping length in the side you're bending towards. Feel for and resist collapsing bone to bone. Really root the feet and invite that space between the vertebrae. Take a few more deep breaths into stretching the fascia here, perhaps reaching through thumb, index, middle, ring, and pinky. And then exhale back up to standing and release your arm. Pause with your breath. Okay, we've done some good side lengthening. Let's just do a little warming up with some other standing poses. So come back to your mats. Open your feet wide. And turn the left foot out, taking the right heel back. Remember, it's heel to heel alignment for most of us, unless you're super flexible. Then we open up to star pose. For some of you, the foot, the back foot may even be more than heel to heel. The front heel may come into space and the back heel may be off to the uh, right. We pause in our star pose and find that long, spacious spine again from all angles, okay? So you're lengthening straight up. You're not leaning towards the left. And then we bend the left knee open over the second metatarsal. Long spine. Relax those upper traps. Let the ocean buoys lift your armpits. And looking towards the front left hand, draw the right hand around and exhale it back through the heart. Inhale and exhale. Can your lower body stay stable as your upper body does a little twisting here? Inhaling forward and exhaling through. Remember, if that doesn't feel good in your spine, you can make a smaller circle with the arm so it doesn't come all the way up to the forward hand. And then following your gaze towards the back hand, turn the palms up, look skyward. Inhale the hands up and exhale down along this channel of the spine. Inhaling, open your arms. Exhale, draw sky energy through the body. Let yourself really gather the energy around you and draw it through like a cleanse. One more time. Gathering the life force and exhaling it through. Bring your left hand to your left femur, right arm alongside the ear and stretch from the outer right foot through each finger and find that length in the left side body too if you decide to come lower. Really ground into the left arm and see if you can open your heart slightly skyward. Reach the tailbone for the back foot heel. Lift energy through the lower spine from the pelvic floor. And then if you'd like, bow towards earth. Again, active Uddiyana Bandha along the front of the spine. And then float yourselves back up, right fingertips to the right leg, left palm skyward, dancing warrior. A fluid, three-dimensional breath. Keep this right side body long. Keep the neck long. And exhale back to your Vera 2, gaze resting out over your fingertips. Straightening the left leg, turn it in and turn the right leg out. Bend the right knee out over your second metatarsal. Your torso faces the long edge of your mat in this pose. 
but your head turns and gazes out over the front fingertips. Feel into the length of your spine and the rooting down from pelvis through the feet and then draw the left hand around and exhale it through the heart. Inhale and exhale. Staying aware of pranamaya, pranayama through the practice. Staying aware of your breathing. of your rooting and then opening the palms up reach skyward exhale the energy down through the channel of the spine follow your own breath as you draw prana in nurturing the body like you're drawing in the warmth from a wood stove the starlight in a night sky Draw in the energy around us, even in the winter. And then opening your arms, bring the right hand to the femur and the left arm up alongside the ear. Stretch long, lifting the pelvic floor. Lengthen the right side body before you come down. And then grounding through the pelvis, can you lengthen both side bodies? not just along the spine, but also the outer body from hip to armpit. And press into the forearm on the femur and lift the heart slightly, a very gentle twist. And exhale, turn the heart towards earth, bowing, rooting yourself, coming back to neutral, float yourself back up to standing, left fingertips to back leg, right palm up, Relaxing the tops of the shoulders away from the ears. Keeping the left side body long into the armpit and along that left side of the neck. And then we float back up to Virabhadrasana 2 and straighten the front leg and turn it in and step the legs together, pausing in our mountain pose. Let your head and hyoid bone and eyes rest back. And then step the right foot forward and the left foot back, taking your rock step. And pause in your rock step. Open your arms like wings. And take, did I say right foot? <laughs> I'll switch sides. Take your left hand around towards your right hip gently. And then come back around right hand towards left hip. And let yourself sway and twist the spine real gently here, back and forth. Fluid breath. So we tend to twist in our daily lives and not even realize we're doing so. I invite you to become more aware of the twists you do during the day to reach for something or as you're sweeping the floor or raking leaves. Can you activate the obliques to support you from going too far into a twist? Come back to center, step the feet together and switch sides. Gently taking the right hand to the left hip, the left hand behind the body and then swinging back across. Fluid breath, gentle twisting. You can get the head and neck involved, but try not to crank the head around. Just be aware of gentle, fluid stretching of the discs between the vertebrae. Warming the body up. Come back to center and step the feet together, mountain pose. Find the head of the arm bones in that neutral place, that middle place. A gently lifting heart and rooting tailbone. The hyoid bone lifting up and in, letting the base of the skull rest back and lift slightly. Fluid, three-dimensional breath into the body. Invite Samana Vayu to draw you inward, 
to help you integrate the movements you're doing into your awareness, the sensations you're feeling, building your awareness for your movements in daily life. And then let's bring in our chair or our blocks for our Prasarita Padottanasana or our folded forward uh, Uptavista Konasana from the seat. So some of you may want to take your wide-legged forward fold towards the seat of the chair. Some of you may want to bend down towards your blocks. Some of you may want to sit on the chair with your legs wide and bend down towards the blocks. So you choose. Okay, so yeah, Uptavista Konasana, some of you are choosing, good. So you bring your blocks ahead of you, whether you're standing or seated. And let's inhale up from the pelvis, long spine. Imagine that hot air balloon lifting you from center palate, lifting you straight up. And then hollowing your groins back. So if you're on the seat, you're on the front edge. We lengthen up and we begin to hinge slowly forward. Hinge forward, rooting your feet, and bring your hands down to your blocks. Inhale, length into the spine. Make sure you're honoring your natural curves here. So your lumbar spine still curls into the body. Your neck still curls in towards the front plane of the body. You can stay there, or you can take your blocks lower and forward for a wide-legged forward fold. It's kind of, if you're standing, it's a wide-legged downward dog. If you're seated, it's that same space for the spine. We broaden across the top of the shoulders, lengthen out of the spine, rest the pelvis back, drawing more space between the vertebrae. Invite the breath between each vertebrae set. Imagine that your breath is pumping a little bike tire between each vertebrae, filling the discs with life force energy, revitalizing them. We stay here for a moment, really inviting the breath to help us lengthen. But you can play with where your head and shoulders are in space. Maybe you take your blocks a little wider. Lift your head a little bit. Lengthen through the neck. Draw your shoulders back away from the ears. Playing in the pose. And then let's draw our blocks back in beneath our heads and place the left hand on the block and let the right wing rise, right shoulder blade onto the rib cage. Lengthening out through the top of the head and the tailbone, ground from the pelvis into the feet and let the right wing lift, tacking the left sit bone back. Only lift as high as feels good in your body, remembering to keep space between the vertebrae. And then exhale, the right wing comes back down, planting on your blocks or chair seat, and the left arm lifts, shoulder blade onto the back. We twist from the spine, lower spine, up through the shoulder girdle, and finally the head. Fluid breath. We feel into the neck. Have we gone to a position that we can comfortably hold where there's still a spaciousness between the vertebrae? So don't crank the neck thoughtlessly. Stay with your awareness of creating space between the vertebrae. You may not twist as far. And then exhale. Release the left wing. Ground from your roots. Hands to your pelvis. Lift back to standing. And bring your hands to interlace the funny way behind your head. Lifting the base of the skull. Lift your elbows skyward. Lift your heart center. Root either into your sit bones or if you're seated or into your heels if you're standing. Find that length up the spine, shoulder girdle releasing away from ears. And then exhale, release. Okay, let's now turn our chair seat around 
Some of you may prefer that are taller to use a wall rather than the chair. Some of you may use a countertop or a dresser or something. Um, and then if you'd like to come lower, bring your blocks in and we'll come into Par's vote to Nasana, okay? So we'll step the left foot forward and the right foot back and we'll take our rock step. And then we pause and we're aimed straight down the mat and our feet are comfortably planted. And let's begin by pressing down on the pelvic rim and inhaling, lengthening the spine. Draw your thumbs behind your back, your elbows behind your back, and lengthen the back body, lifting the heart. Lengthen these backside waists up into the um, outside of the armpit. Lift that side back waist long as you lift the heart, keeping the neck long. And then exhale, fold forward, draw the groins back. Bring your hands to the chair seat or the countertop or wall and press the chair forward towards your Parsvottanasana. I'm gonna come take a look today. Good. Broad across your shoulder girdle, find those shoulders on the back body and find length through the head. Beautiful. Some of you may bring your hands lower, but more important than that is to really find the length out of the spine. Beautiful length, Anna. Fluid breath. That looks nice, Lorraine. I like how you're working your shoulders and neck. Yeah. Fluid breath. Yeah. Keeping length through the spine. Beautiful, Sharon. Relax the heart center between the shoulder blades. Try to melt the thoracic spine open there. I like how wide you have your hands. Terry. And ground your feet. Walk your hands back up if you're on low. Engage your bandhas to lift yourself skyward, reaching your hands up. And then exhale, hands through namaste. Release your hands to your sides and switch. This is fun. I'm watching you today. So step the other foot forward and take your rock step. Nice, Sharon. And then ground both feet, bring your hands to your pelvic rim and take your thumbs around behind you, your elbows around behind you and press down on the pelvis to lift these side bodies long. Lift the heart center. Beautiful, Susie. Fluid breath, really long neck. Don't let the chin go too high and shorten the back of the neck. Keep the back of the neck and the front of the neck long. Beautiful, very nice. Then exhale, fold forward, draw the groins back. Nice, Jonathan. Fluid breath. Use your chair, your prop to help you lengthen back behind you. Drawing the hip crease back. Fluid breath. Good, and then if you'd like to, you can walk your hands slowly lower. Fluid breath. Nice, Jonathan. Nice length through the armpit there while you're holding those chair legs. Fluid breath. Really remember to melt that area between the shoulder blades so the head and neck may lift. I see you playing with it, Linda. That's good. Broad across the top of the shoulders. Beautiful length, John. Bending the front knee if you need to to keep that nice length in the spine. Breathing into the hip opening. And then, this is where it's really important to do the abdominal work. Lift the pelvic floor. Use your Uddiyana Bandha as you walk your hands back up and float the hands skyward. That's where people get hurt usually is in the transitions. Nice work. Exhale, hands to the heart. And step your feet together. Mountain pose. Pause in your mountain pose for a few fluid breaths. And I think we have time today to go ahead and do a regular trikonasana before we do our revolved triangle. So bring your chair or your block into the left side of the mat. 
and we will try our trikonasana. Now you can also use your shin in this pose or your leg. You don't necessarily have to come to a prop, okay? And step your feet wide, turning the left foot out and lifting the right heel back. So this is a big standing pose practice for us today. And then we inhale up into our star pose. And we always remember to feel the pelvis rooting down into the legs and that hot air balloon stretching the spine long. Relax your shoulders away from your ears and bring your right hand to your hip, lengthening the left side body and then coming down to your prop, whether it's the chair or the block or one uh, high block on a low block. Okay, so we're looking for this length in the spine. We're looking for a long underside body. This is a really good place to practice lengthening both side bodies. And then also a great place to practice with how far do I want to twist my head? Let's all look down towards the floor. Lengthen the back of the neck. Draw the hyoid bone up and in. And then turn your gaze out towards the horizon. Pause there. Feel into length on both sides of the neck. If it feels comfortable keeping length to the back of the neck, you can look skyward. If that doesn't feel good, come back to looking at the horizon. There's nothing wrong with that. Work on lengthening both sides of the neck. And then from the pelvis, root into the legs, activate your bandhas and float yourself back up out of the pose and turn the legs around or move your props so they're ready for the next side. As you get ready, open into your star pose. Pause with the practice of releasing this upper shoulder and lifting your side waist up to the armpits. Use those under the arm muscles. <laughs> Bring the left hand to the hip, stretch the right arm long. Check in that your knees aren't hyperextending as you bring the hand down to the prop. Maybe you start high on fingertips and unfurl the wing and check in with both side bodies long before you come to the palm. Really feel into stretching from this uh, right leg hip crease to the right armpit. Broad across your wingspan. Knees are not hyperextending, so you can connect from the pelvis deep into the floor. Let the gaze look towards the foot. And then long neck, perhaps out to the horizon. Long back of the neck, perhaps up towards the sky. Fluid three-dimensional breath. We bring the head back to neutral or to gaze at the floor as we root to rise out of the pose, turning the right leg in and stepping the feet together, mountain pose. Pause in your mountain pose, finding those rooting heels, tailbone, breathing length up the whole channel of the spine. Finding your heads of your arm bones in that middle place. Three dimensional breath deep into the torso. Okay, let's take our prop to the left again and let's come into our revolved trikonasana pose, okay, our revolved triangle. So we step the right foot forward, the chair's on the back of the left side of the mat, that's where our hand will go and we will twist towards the right front leg. So we take our rock step and then we ground the left foot behind our prop and we inhale. And just like in Parsvottanasana, we lift the arms, lengthen the torso and exhale, hinge forward, bringing the left hand to the prop and floating the right wing shoulder blade onto the back. We ground from the pelvis down and then we begin to lift the right wing, twisting the right side body. Long neck here, again, play with where does it feel good to have my head in space? Fluid breath, the bandha, Uddiyana bandha, supporting the kind of side front of the spine. 
three-dimensional breath. As you let yourself feel the posture, fine-tuning it in micro ways. You can draw the front leg hip crease back. Support the spine from below all the way up through the neck. And then release the lifted wing, grounding through the feet, long forward spine. Inhale, hands to the heart. Step your feet together, mountain pose. Let your gaze turn inward again to how the energy in your body is moving. This is your pranamaya kosha. The bone and blood body, the anamaya kosha. So then move your props if you'd like to use the chair or the block and step the left foot forward and rock step. Pause with your right foot behind your props. Inhale, lengthen skyward, lift the pelvic floor, lengthen up the side bodies to the armpits and exhale, hinge forward, bringing your right hand to your prop of choice. Draw the left hip crease back, find length through the whole of the spine and then float the right, the left, sorry, is this left? Left hip crease back. And then let the left arm come up, shoulder onto the back. Remember, we don't throw the wrist behind us. Guide the opening with the shoulder blade so that your arm bone stays integrated. We sometimes try to get that hand so high because it makes us feel like we've come farther into the twist, but what we end up doing is compromising the front of the rotator cuff. So let this twist come through the torso. Very nice, Linda. I saw you work with that. Yeah, good. Guide with that back of the shoulder. Let the hand, everybody, come down a little bit. Guide with the back of the shoulder and then open the arm back. Yeah, fluid breath. Some of you could play with what would it feel like? Would I have more space along the spine if I came to fingertips? Just try it if you're on the block. Just for a moment. Yeah, good. And if you have more space in the spine, that's a better place to be. And then as you're ready, exhale, release down. Beautiful, Terry and Anna, and float back up. Step your feet together and come to mountain pose. Feel for the movement of prana in your body here. Okay. I'd like us to try that uh, pose one more time. I'd like everybody to try it higher, just out of curiosity. So if you're on a chair, that's good. You'll start, so you can just watch me for a second. You'll start maybe even with a block on the chair, especially those of you that are tall. Okay. So start here. You pause your rock step. You inhale, lift, and fold forward. Your hand comes to your prop. What you're focusing on is length along the spine, out through the top of the head. The other wing opens. We draw the front leg hip crease back to keep the side body long, but we open the pose here. See the diagonal from arm to arm and the triangle of the legs. I want you to find that length and then move the block out of the way. So those of you who are coming to a block, make it a high block with a low block under it and another block on top, okay? I want you to come to fingertips first as you float into the pose. Yes. Okay, these look good. Okay, so go ahead, come into the pose. And I want you to feel the difference as you find more length and height. Yeah. So, John, I might even try a block on the seat of that chair just to kind of feel for the length. Yeah. And good. Beautiful, Terry. Do you feel how you can really open the length of the pose here? That lets you find more freedom in working the shoulder blade back. That's a beautiful pose, Joy. Really nice energy running through all the lines of the pose. You're twisting towards the front leg. You too, Susie. You've got really broadness across your wingspan. You too, Jonathan. That's beautiful. 
Now everybody, exhale, release the arms. I don't mean to leave other people out. Your poses are beautiful too. I'm just kind of looking person to person. Step your feet together and pause with your breath. So it's like other poses. I would take the high version first and then slowly let yourself down and make sure the energy is still floating through the pose. Okay? So let's try it again on the other side. It's more energizing and vitalizing, revitalizing, if you can have the energy move through the posture. If you come into a pose where you cramp the energy, then that doesn't do you any good. So remember, you're stepping one foot forward. This time, I think it's your right foot again, right? Is that right? Or is it your left foot? Right foot. Okay. Whatever foot. Anna's is the left foot. Step your foot forward that's opposite to the chair. Remember, you're twisting towards the front leg. Okay, and then inhale, lengthen your spine, root your legs down into the floor. Really find that length. Beautiful, Terry, because he's got really nice breadth across his shoulder girdle. And then exhale, fold forward into your Parsvottanasana. Beautiful, Jory. As you come forward, bring your fingertips or your palm to your blocks. Yeah, really keep and maintain that length. And then let the other wing open. Keep the shoulder blade on the back as you open the wing. Beautiful, Susie. Broad from the base of the neck out across your wingspan. Beautiful, Sharon. Really nice energy in the pose. Fluid breath. Beautiful, John. More length to your spine. There's a whole line from your back leg up. Now think also of your neck, lengthening in that line with the spine, everyone. And then exhale, release your wings. Beautiful, Linda. Take your time to unfold from the pose and step out. Pause in mountain pose. Fluid breath. Channel that breath along the spine. Remember that in yoga, the shishumana runs along the front of the spine. It's an energetic channel that runs through each chakra. And it runs from those chakras out into smaller rivers and streams of energy that feed the whole body and move from our individual unique body to others, interconnecting us. Breathe up that center channel of the Shishumana. Imagine that energy running through 72,000 rivers to feed the trillions of cells in your community inside your own body. Okay. Uh, we have time to come into our Ardha Chandrasana. So let's bring our chair to, and I'd like everybody to try the revolved Ardha Chandrasana from the chair today. Bring the chair seat to face you. And then come to stand in front of it and bring your hands down so that you have a tabletop. You're coming into your tabletop position. So we did Virabhadrasana 3 at the beginning of practice with our hands on the wall. Now we're going to come into it again. Let's lift the left foot back behind you. Along from heel, in through the pelvic floor, along the spine, through the top of the head. You can stay here or you can release the right wing hand off your chair seat and float the right shoulder blade onto the back ribs. Really integrate the arm bone. Find length from heel through top of head. And then if you'd like to, keeping the left hip buoyed, lift the right wing into your twist. So you're twisting towards your standing leg. Beautiful. Stay strong in your pose. Use your bandhas. Very nice. Keeping the length. Again, those of you who are tall, if it feels hard to balance in the length, come to fingertips or come to a block. Fluid breath. 
Beautiful poses. The work is to keep that back leg booing up, that hip. And then exhale, release your wing, step down from the pose and come up. Fluid breath. So it is probably a good practice to release part by part, like let the wing come down so your spine is in neutral and then bring the foot down. Okay, let's try the other side. Come down, hands onto your prop. Fluid breath, keep length to your spine. And as you're ready, lift the next side foot. Make your pelvis as level as you can and hug your glutes in towards midline. Find that length from heel to top of head and then release the opposite wing. Bring the shoulder blade onto the back body before you begin to twist. Try to keep the lifted leg hip buoyed. Beautiful. Some of you may stop before the twist and work on Virabhadrasana 3 with the wing lifted. Stay long from top of head to heel, broad across the shoulder girdle, active in your center core to support all those limbs going different directions. Beautiful. One more deep breath here. And then exhale, release your wing. And then step the foot down. Beautiful. And come to mountain pose. Pause with your breath. Let your shoulders rest into that middle place. Neck long, let the hyoid bone rest in and the base of the skull lift up behind you. Feel your spine over your upright pelvis, over your femurs, over your tibia bone over the arches of your feet. Fluid, three-dimensional ujjayi breath. Drop pranamaya, pranavayu up from the feet, along the spine. Draw a pranavayu down on the exhale, outer body grounding you to earth. On your next inhale, draw your awareness into the interior. In a quiet, observational way, let yourself be here. Sensing the body. As we celebrate the shortest days of the year with our inward gaze. Okay, and then last but not least, let's come to our Ardha Chandrasana. So you did your revolved one first today. You can either use the chair seat if you want to try the center of the room or use the block, or you can bring your block over or your chair over to your wall and take your kind of cartwheel rock step. <laughs> your back hand can come to the hip if you don't want to have to worry about it. And you step up and over the leg to bring your block under your shoulder and unwind the pose. Okay, so the wall is fine. If you'd like to work out in the room, you can do that too. Hold the block in the hand closest to your wall or your prop if you're using that. Yeah. And keep awake in the leg that's lifting. Activate the toes. Yeah, there you go, Linda. Beautiful. Stay long from heel through the top of the head. It looks like Terry and Anna are going to have their feet meet. <laughs> yeah, good idea, Terry. So Terry brought in another block he's so tall to put under his top block. What we're looking for is those long side bodies to help support you. So John, you might want to try that too if, if you guys have one extra block, putting a block under your block or something under your block so that you can really get that long side. 
Beautiful energy, Terry, through your fingertips. Beautiful pose, Anna. Really strong standing leg. Nice, Jory. Really great energy. All of you think of still relaxing at the base of the neck around the shoulder girdle as much as you can. Beautiful. And then bend your standing knee. Use your core to lift out. Very nice, John. And let's try the other side. Okay. Fluid breath. I'll be able to see you better there, Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can come into the pose as you're ready. Remember the standing foot wants to stay pointed towards the front of the mat. It's going to try to revolve inward. Beautiful, Anna. Yeah. Bringing the block thoughtfully below the shoulder. Really nice alignment, Anna. Fluid breath. Check in with your standing knee that you're not hyperextending. Hard for me to tell sometimes when people are in sweatpants. Beautiful, Sharon. See, all of you who have your leg lifted, what happens if I buoy it just a tiny bit higher? Reaching out through the heel. Beautiful. Staying long in the pose. And then activating your bandhas as you float back up out of the pose and into mountain. Really energized pose, Anna. Beautiful, Jory. Fluid breath. Those looked good. So, John, that looked good to me with you higher. I hope that felt, felt good. You and Terry are both tall, and I think that, that added lift can just help you find more length in the spine. So not the props don't serve us all equally. <laughs> if we're tall, we need a taller block, right? But they don't, they haven't invented those yet <laughs> that I know of. Okay. So as some people are finishing their sides, I think Jonathan had to leave for a moment. Go ahead and come back to your mountain pose. Feel both heels grounding you. Your tailbone reaching earthward. And from those rooting legs, I'll lift the pelvic floor and lengthen up all sides of the spine. Let it grow skyward. We've done a lot of good work with our wings today. Open broad across your collarbones. Find the shoulder blades on your back ribs, the head of the arm bones in that middle place. Let the fluid breath expand the whole circumference of the torso. Relax the outer body over your inner strength. Breathe into that flame deep inside you. Let the breath serve your good intentions. Serve your heart as well as your physical body. And then let's come down to the floor. Okay, so please have your bolster <coughs> blocks if you'd like them. We are going to come into our, our side hip stretches and um, perhaps a twist if that feels good in your body. So let's start with the bolster on your right side. You may want your sandbags, your layers, your eye pillows close by so that you can reach for those. You may even already want to go ahead and put on your sweatshirt or your sweater if you took it off. <clears throat> and then let's lay ourselves down in constructive rest. And just nod the tailbone gently. Tailbone to earth, tailbone to sky, releasing along the spine. Fluid breath, you may want to come into your somatic walking, side to side with the pelvis. Fluid breath. Fluid breath. 
If you don't feel good in taking the leg up and long out for your twist, you can always do the windshield wiper twist instead, stepping your feet wide and letting your knees fall to one side and the other. So you can make that choice for yourself. If you want to bring the leg up, bring your strap up over your right foot. <laughs> Left foot heel aligned with your sit bone. You can pendulum the right foot. Feel into the low back. Try not to have the low back follow the pendulum motion. And then come up to the top and hold your strap in your right hand. Your bolster can be next to your right hip <coughs> or it can be farther out. You decide. And you can lengthen the left leg along the mat and the left arm out like a wing. And as you're ready, open the right leg out towards your prop. Try to keep grounding in the left side body as you open the right leg. And then when you get to the prop, you can relax open into the stretch. What we want to be able to do when we lift back out of this supported stretch is reintegrate the right femur bone, activate our core muscles to help us lift this heavy leg back to center. The myofascial slings can help us. So your left rib to right hip pointer line can help you. Your <clears throat> inner thighs can help you. So just remember that when it comes time to exhale and float the right leg back to center, taking the strap in the left hand, bring your right hand to your hip crease and press the femur bone towards the foot of the mat. Take the right foot across the body and breathe into the stretch at the right hip and pendulum the right foot a little bit. Stay broad across your pelvis. Flex and point the toes of the right foot if you like. Keep the right pelvis on the floor for these deep hip stretches. Some of you may want to keep your right hand in the hip crease. Some may want to take the strap in both hands and draw small circles with the right foot to stretch into those right deep hip muscles. And you can take your circles the other way. Saying, good morning, abductors. Good morning, deep hip muscles. And then if you have a block or a bolster and you want to use that for support in your twist, if you choose to open the right leg into your twist, go ahead and do so. Rolling the right femur bone down towards the left foot. Resting the right arm open behind you if that feels good. Remember, we don't want to come to bone on bone compression if we have osteoporosis, and that's easy to do in these supine twists. So you may not twist as far. Feel into your own body. Decide what's right for you. Relax your eyes and your jaw. Breathing deep into your body. Breathe in the daylight that is here. So my two kids are with their dad's side of the family in Costa Rica this vacation. And Colin just sent me a photo. So he went yesterday from 33 below zero to, I think, in the mid-70s <laughs> in Costa Rica. So, what, 100-plus degree span. <laughs> Bring the right hand over to take the strap and float the right leg back up, bending the right knee in towards the armpit, come into half-happy baby. 
some of you may be able to hold the foot or tighten up on the strap and take the right foot out to the side of the head, leg long by the ear. Don't do it if it doesn't feel good. Breathe deep into the pelvic bowl, deep in along the spine, deep into any muscles you'd like to have relax on the exhale. And then bend the knee back in and release the right foot to the floor. Lengthen both legs out on the mat and just notice any different right side to left. I always feel like the right side is so much more grounded or the side I've stretched is so much more grounded than the other. And then if you'd like the bolster on the other side as you rest the leg out, Bring it around, take your strap up, bend your right knee, place the right foot on the floor and pendulum the left leg, keeping your lumbar spine in neutral. So we're not over flattening it to the floor. Fluid breath, come up with your leg, hold the strap in the left hand and lengthen the right leg out and the right arm like a wing and slowly begin to take the left leg out. Really root the right side body to support the left leg. And as the left leg comes on to the bolster, you can relax yourself open. Breathe deep into the body. Now, if you can't bring your leg that low, you may be able to set yourself up so that you can land your foot on a couch or a low bookshelf or a coffee table with a blanket over it, something to give you the support you want. Fluid breath. You could bring your folding chair around and have that as a support. Relaxing open on the exhales. Upon a vayu helping you ground. And then we exhale. The left leg back to center. Take the strap in the right hand. And bring the right foot across just as far as we can go with the, I mean the left foot across just as far as we can go with the left pelvis on the ground. Stay active into your left foot. Perhaps you rock from heel to toe to find the deep hip muscles you want to stretch. You may come back out towards the pinky toe side, lift the foot more towards the head, and then go back towards the right side body to see where is the stretch. For some of you, it may be in the hamstring. For some deep in the hip. Some of you may want to hold the strap in both hands and draw small circles with the foot. And take the circles the other way. Even as you do this work, can you be conscious of a long spine? And then if you'd like to open into the full twist, prepare your block if you want support and bring the left leg over to the right side, opening the left arm like a wing behind you. Resting into the twist. As you breathe into the belly in a twist, remember that these twists help squeeze and release the intestines which can help aid our digestion. If you breathe deep into the intestines while you're in a twist, that can also aid your digestion.
And then as you're ready, reach the left hand across to help the left leg back up to center. Bend the left knee in towards your armpit and pause. Half happy baby. Fluid breath. Some of you may take the foot in your hand or tighten the strap and take the left leg out to the side long. Wherever you are, stay with your fluid breath. And if the ujjayi sound helps you to ground your body, then engage it. Perhaps the ujjayi sound helps you relax your mind. And then bend the knee, release the foot from the strap and release both feet to the floor. Walk into your constructive rest and rock your pelvis side to side as you come into somatic walking after the twist. And you can stay with the somatic walking or pause and tailbone to earth, tailbone towards sky. Gently roll your spine, massaging it. You can stay with either of these or draw both knees into your chest and circle them wide apart and back together again. We did lots of good standing pose work. Notice if your hips feel really open now in this circling. And perhaps take your circles the other way. So we did a lot of good standing pose work today. You can come into any Shavasana of your choice. And I recommend bringing your chair in so that your calves can be on the seat, bringing your bolster or a blanket in for under your sacrum, bringing in an eye pillow for your eyes if that calms your nervous system and bringing any blankets in to tuck around you to keep you warm. And let's lift into our Shavasana. So this pose, the waterfall pose, is very healthy for the body. It allows the blood and lymph to gently flow back into the torso. If you have varicose veins, any legs up higher than the torso is healthy for those veins. And as the blood that feeds the legs comes back to the torso, the heart can easily bathe the thalamus, the thyroid, the pituitary, and the pineal glands. Raising the pelvis higher also releases the intestines any kind of compacting that's happened in the intestines gets to release when you lift the pelvis a little higher than the belly.
then if it's comfortable, you place your eye pillow over your eyes if you haven't already. And you settle into the hug of gravity. Invite your gaze inward to the sensations in the body. See if you can deepen your relaxation with each exhale. Inviting the mind and the heart to rest along with the body. Like we might notice a quiet stillness outside on a winter day. Invite that quiet stillness inside. Now into that stillness, invite some gentle movement. Invite a deepening breath. And 
invite whatever stretch or movement sounds good to your body. If you'd like to stay in Shavasana, all curled up you may, or you can bring yourself up to a comfortable seat. So, as you come to your comfortable seat, take a few breaths up the length of your spine, relaxing the outer body, feel your connection with gravity. Apanavayu is the wind of grounding, but it's also the wind of letting go. Donna Patrick, who oftentimes comes to this class, shared a solstice poem with me yesterday. And I wanted to share it with all of you. Solstice, another year on the silent wheel of the seasons. The tide of days coming and going, the breathing of planets and sun. As outside the window, night moves west, like a great ship of stars, and the trees step forward, never speaking of where they've been or what they've seen on their long voyage, gathering light. Let's inhale our hands to our hearts. May you enjoy your winter solstice time. Namaste. Thank you. So I always like to say who the poet is. It's, a, it's actually Donna's friend. Um, and I think he's from, yeah, he's from Fairbanks, Alaska. His name is John Kuistra. <laughs> so I, I love that image of the um, trees on a voyage gathering light. Isn't that nice? and the ship of stars moving west. <laughs> Pretty cool. All right, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Thursday. And thanks. thanks.